Okay, here's another argument to make for VHS and DVD. Now, I want I wanted not DVD, VH, um, VHS and Laserdisc, or whatever the title is, Laserdisc and DVD. Probably put Laserdisc first because I consider it more of a fun format than anything else. Here's what I've been doing lately, and it's been a long time um, I've been doing this. I've had a Laserdisc player for a couple of years now. It's been nothing but excitement and fun. You just don't get the same experience that you do with any other kind of format. Putting that big round disc, uh, record size disc almost in, playing it, and having just having a lot of fun. Unfortunately, not a lot of people have the, the opportunity to do it. Um, when I talk about Laserdisc, it requires money. You know, and I keep mentioning this, but people need to understand. Don't go out and buy a Laserdisc player and then expect... To just not spend any money. People say, well, if I can get a, a, a player cheap for like 50 bucks with a, with a few movies, I can bring it back to my house. No, it doesn't work like that. Because you don't have to have the right television to watch it on. Um, if you're okay with watching it like crap on some converter to your television, or if your television that's an LCD, an LED, or whatever it is, has some composite... I don't believe they make any OLED TVs or composite. If they do, they have to be pretty high up there in price. Um, you could do some of that, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> I, re I really, I, I, I wouldn't recommend watching it like that. You need a CRT television. So, the expenses of doing this are getting the player, getting the movies, getting the television. Um, for, well, for me, it was pretty easy. I was able to get two CRT televisions... One really good size, one mid-size, and I bought two small ones from Goodwill. Not everyone's that, you know, lucky. So what you have to do is you have to go searching. Now, don't go searching at flea markets and stuff because you can't plug anything in at a flea market. Not a flea, not a flea market. I meant a yard sale. You might have a chance at a flea market if there's an indoor one. They might let you plug it in. Um, the reason why I keep mentioning it. Is it's because it's important. You need to know if, if you watch everything the wrong way. Believe me, you'll regret it. I when I first started watching Laserdisc, for instance, I had a converter, and I have two of them still. I'm not gonna throw them away or get pissed off because I know one day I may need them when I have no choice and all my CITs die out. I'm not gonna be able to find one again. But um, these things don't upgrade the quality of the picture. All they do is convert it into your television. The picture looks like shit. It is somewhat watchable, but it looks terrible. And forget about it if you try to plug a VCR into the converter. A laser disc is somewhat bearable. When you plug in VCRs into these things, they look terrible. I tried that a couple of times, it looks awful. Just to let people know that. So um, what's gonna go on here? Um, I'm just gonna say that. Now VCRs for now, VCRs are going to be easy to replace still. You can go to a bunch of Goodwills and stuff and flea markets and you can try to find them. And some of them work, some of them don't, but you'll find one that works eventually. But with Laserdisc, you can't find one either. I actually have, this is a big thing to mention, I have an attempt, I have a chance to get a third Laserdisc player because I found one somewhere. And um, this is a huge thing because I've never seen a Laserdisc player anywhere. In the wild, where at a Goodwill or a flea market or um, at a Savers type of store, I've never seen a Laserdisc player ever. Not even a Laserdisc movie itself. But this is the important thing with any, the last thing in this video too. When you go to buy something like this, if it's at a flea market or um, uh, wherever it might be, bring a test disc with you. That means you need to bring a test laser disc, put it into the machine. If it gets stuck, who cares? It's a piece of crap, right? Find the most disc rotted disc you have in your collection and bring it with you. With the VCR tapes, buy the worst bring the worst VCR tape. Well, actually, no. You have to bring a good VCR tape because um, you have to see if it can actually read the tape correctly. Um, you have to bring test media with you. To see if everything works. If you don't, there could be severe ramifications for it. All I'm going to say is this has just been a pleasure with VHS and Laserdisc. I've been watching it more 
than any kind of D um, anything else. The only thing that doesn't really trump it that I watch a, probably more is DVD. And forget 4K. I do that about once a week now. And you're going to say, how can you do that? Now I'm extending on this. I was, I was going to quit. It's because I you know I caught up with all my 4K movies now. And I have all I really have to finish is Strange New Worlds, a season of that, season two in 4K, and a couple of seasons of The Mandalorian. I'm not just, I don't, I don't like this. It's not the same experience I get out of that. I hate it. Like, like when I use my smart TV, you know, a smart TV is supposed to push the Blu-ray player, um, eject the disc out, um, and everything turns on. It's supposed to go to the right menu, um, the right input, everything. It doesn't do that. Well, actually, no, it does. It goes to the right input. Um, but it doesn't do it when I push eject. I have to put, uh, I have to, how do you put it? You have to put the disc into the player first. Then it screws everything up and switches the input back and forth. And it won't stop no matter what you do. You can try to manually switch the inputs and keep switching them back. So the only way I can get things to work the correct way is to turn everything off and turn everything on at, at once. Not at once. At one, one at a time. Turn the receiver and TV on first. Then... I go into the menu and click the DVD player. It turns on automatically. It's fine. Whatever you do, don't turn everything on at once. Because you shouldn't be that dependent on everything. Always remember how to use menus and stuff. Unfortunately, with Laserdisc, you don't have to do that. <laughs> um, Laserdisc is fun. Um, I don't have any big time Laserdisc plays and there's no reason to. I'm not spending my money on RF and all that other crap. It's a lot of money and it's a waste. Because I don't have a laser display down here with my um, receiver and all that. I could do that, but then I would have to sacrifice the picture because there's no CRT down here. Now, I'd rather take the picture and have crappy sound. I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. Um, if I had one down here, I wouldn't have the same kind of picture. And that would be, even though my um, receiver upscale is excellent, but that's not the point. Bye-bye.